Uh, what is the Animal Welfare League? My perspective is that um, the Animal Welfare League is a saving place, a place where animals' lives are saved. It's where animals that have no hope come and we give them hope. We do our very best to find them the best possible homes and take good care of them while we're here. And who do you serve? We serve the people of Charlotte County and the animals of Charlotte County. Uh, what is a real life? Well, hopefully you can see what it is. It's actually um, a simulation for these animals to experience. Um, they've come here from clearly a home environment. And instead of shoving them in a crate, we like to give them the experience of being, and again, in a real home, in a real um, environment of where they probably were for so many years until they were given up. And we try to do this with as many of the animals as we can because we want them to be acclimated to a real life environment so that when they go into a home they're not surprised or scared or whatever. So yeah, this is it's I mean, kind of like de stress. <laughs> it's to de stress them. Yeah. And to create less anxiety. Why will Real Life Room make an impact for the dogs you serve and the volunteers who support you? So the neat thing about the Real Life Room is it's not only a de-stressor for the animals, it's a great place for a staff member or a volunteer to have a little time to, to de-stress too. They can take their favorite dog in there and just relax for a while, watch some TV, just chill out, just have a little couch time. And how does the Real Life Room support mental health in Charlotte County? Well, it certainly supports the mental health of our staff and volunteers. Having a little downtime is good for anyone. So a little downtime with, a, with your favorite dog, just to pet and love on, it can solve the world of problems. Anything else you wanna say? Thank you, Charlotte Leadership, for doing <laughs> this and for picking us. We are so appreciative. We are the primary mental health and substance use agency serving Charlotte County and DeSoto County. We have been around for about 53 years and we serve about 16,000 individuals each year. We have a variety of inpatient, community, and outpatient programs for mental health and substance use. We have 30 beds here where we house adults and children who are um, admitted under the Baker Act and Marchman Act. So the patients here are uh, placed here because they're a danger to themselves or others and need some sort of therapeutic support and intervention. And who do you serve? We really serve all ages of adults and children. So we serve, you know, as young as, as two or three if they're in need of services and as 100 if they're in need of services. Um, and we have a variety of mental health and substance use programs for all ages. How do your services support the mental health of citizens of Charlotte County? We provide a wide range of services depending on what the needs are. So the highest level of care is our crisis stabilization unit for those who need emergency mental health or substance use treatment. And then we have lower levels of care for those who want to continue treatment. We have wraparound programs, um, community-based programs for different needs, um, such as um, our CAT program for children with severe and emotional behavioral disturbances, our FACT program for adults with major mental illness and major substance use issues. And then we have traditional case management, therapy services, and medication services. What is a sensory? A sensory room is a therapeutic space um, designed to um, provide activities and different tools for someone to calm themselves or soothe themselves down when they are experiencing um, heightened emotions, anxiety, agitation. Um, it usually has things to um, regulate their emotions and calm themselves down. And why will the sensory room make an impact for those in your crisis? 
sensory rooms are shown to help um, lessen negative emotions and, and decrease tension and help de-escalate um, crisis and, and negative emotions. So an individual um, participating in a sensory room is less likely to need um, medication um, or a restraint or some higher level of um, care to help them um, calm down or regulate their emotions. Anything else you want to share? We're very appreciative of this opportunity to potentially have a sensory room on our unit. We think it will be a great benefit um, and supplemental uh, therapeutic opportunity to help our patients. What is the Family Services Center? The Family Services Center is a collaborative effort and we're a public-private uh, project where we have 14 different nonprofit and community organizations all working together to support the needs of our community. And who do you serve? We serve uh, the most vulnerable. We serve children and families. We serve folks that are low income. Uh, we serve people that need mentoring and support. We serve folks that want to be together and support each other. We serve anybody who comes to our door. And how do you serve to support mental health insurance? There's a variety of ways that we're supporting mental health efforts in our community. The reality is, is that what we are built on are the social determinants of health. Whether or not we're providing financial stability or financial assistance, whether or not we're providing self-sufficiency and resiliency programming, life skills, um, we provide a variety of uh, services that support our partners that are directly providing mental and behavioral health services. So we all play a role. We're all sort of cogs in a wheel around mental health. It's hard to be able to focus, to be able to go to work, to go to school, to do what needs to be done when you don't feel good, when you don't feel right in your head or in your heart. And for us to be able to address those issues in a holistic way, which is the model of the Family Services Center, that's when we know that we're actually making a difference. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the sensory room is? Yes, a sensory room is a place where all of your senses are um, sort of lifted up in a way. We are working to address sight, sound, smells, um, so that someone, when they walk into that room, they are immediately um, transformed in terms of their um, reaction. Within the sensory room, we can help folks to create an environment around them um, that is transporting them from the stress that they're experiencing in that moment. Sometimes that means being able to sit in an environment and talk with someone regarding your mental health or your therapy needs. Uh, it's a variety of things, but for us what it means is a place where people can fully immerse themselves in kind of writing what's going on with them. And how will the sensor make an impact on those you serve? If you think about it, everybody needs sometimes to be able to just catch their breath, to be able to sit and get centered. And that's what the point of this is. Um, what we're trying to do is always to leave people better than we found them. And if we can help people get out of that sort of survival mode to a place where they're thriving mentally, spiritually, financially, in terms of their entire well-being, that's what the goal is. Anything else you want to share? We're excited to have been chosen and we can't wait to see what happens. What is the Guardian at Lightham Foundation? The Guardian Ad Litem Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. We serve all five counties in Southwest Florida, and we really exist to provide normalcy for children that's not met by any other source. So, And who do you serve? We serve foster youth ages 0 to 18, and sometimes above 18, depending on where their case is at in the system. Uh, and all of the children that we serve are represented by a Guardian Ad Litem volunteer advocate in Charlotte. I've always loved children, so we're getting to do things again that we did with our children. But it becomes much more significant to me and, and my wife now because we know nobody else is doing these things with the kids. The basic role is to protect the 
welfare of the child, the interests of the child, because everybody else, when you went to court, has an advocate, you know, their own lawyers, the state has lawyers, the mother and father, everybody does. So we are the advocate for the child. If we see that the child needs therapy and is not getting it, we do something about it. And children's needs, that's a huge part of the foundation's role. If a child needs a tutor, the foundation will pay for a tutor, help pay for things like summer camps, computer training, sports activities, everything that a normal child would need during the course of their life, the foundation will, will fund. is the Alternative Therapies Program. So we, through our Children's Needs Program, especially through the pandemic, our eyes were really open to the fact that certainly the trauma that our children have been through requires some therapy on the other side. Um, they, you know, need intervention to try to get through the things that they've been through, work through the trauma that they've experienced. In what way is having this Alternative Therapy Program help the individuals that you serve? no two stories look exactly the same. And so having access to alternative types of therapy as opposed to just, this is the one way that we, you know, systematically treat this problem, it allows us to meet them where they're at. And Any other, anything else you want to say or provide? The monies that we receive specifically for this initiative will allow that limit to kind of be reduced um, or not be a barrier for a child being able to continue these services.